Welcome to the Migraine Miracle Moment. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Turknett. I'm a neurologist, migraine specialist, migraine sufferer, and author of the book, The Migraine Miracle. In this podcast, you'll learn all about how to find your path to migraine freedom without pills. Let's get started. Howdy, Beast Slayers. In today's episode, I will be answering a couple of questions from a recent clinic chat live discussion. The first one is about breathing exercises to prevent or abort migraines. And the second is whether or not a vegetarian diet that includes dairy and eggs would work for the Migraine Miracle Program. Again, these questions are excerpts from a recent clinic chat live session for Migraine Neverland members that we do over Zoom. If you are interested in taking part in these, as well as being able to submit questions of your own, then you can learn more about becoming a member at mymigrainemiracle.com, and you'll find a link to that in the podcast description. Along with being able to attend all of our clinic chat live discussions, there's a whole host of resources there that we've built over the past decade for helping you to put the Migraine Miracle program into action to slay the beast once and for all. Um, a couple of things. You'll note that I mentioned a book about breathing uh, that I highly recommend um, in this episode, and you'll find a link to that book, as well as a link to the drug-free guide that's mentioned in the um, podcast notes. You'll also hear me mention uh, a live session that I did about keto for migraine, and the replay of that video is available inside of the virtual classroom in Migraine Neverland. So if you are a member or you missed that live session when it uh, took place, you can find the replay there inside of the virtual classroom. Also, we run periodic promotions for the membership for our podcast listeners, and you can find out what the current promotion is by going to mymigrainemiracle.com forward slash moment. And lastly, I'll share a success story from Fran, who is a brand new member going through the Jumpstart Challenge. She says, I just wanted to share that on Friday the 28th, I had a migraine after a day at the beach. It was unexpected because I am following the plan religiously and haven't had a bad, quote, go-to-bed migraine since the first. I resisted taking a Zomig. I tried rehydrating, a little yoga, starve and sink, an ice pack, and just sweated it out from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. The migraine went away. Even more reassuring, I did not get the next migraine 48 hours after the first one, which was my pattern when taking triptans. This is helping me build my resolution to stop taking the triptans. As some of you listening have heard from prior interviews uh, we've done on the podcast, this moment of making it through uh, a migraine for the first time without having taken something is a crucial milestone for so many people we work with. Getting off the endless cycle of abortive medications that so many people are stuck on is such an important piece, and knowing that it's possible to make it through an attack without something is such an important piece in taking that step. All right, and now without further delay, here are the excerpts from our recent clinic chat live. Are there specific breathing exercises for preventing or aborting migraines? This is an interesting topic, and it's one that's getting a lot of attention now. Uh, that's probably why I'm getting the question. Um, so the the short answer is uh, it's the evidence at this point is almost entirely anecdotal when it comes to breathing exercises and, and so forth for migraines. But there's quite a bit of it. There's a there are enough people who have reported success with this sort of thing that um, I'm I think there's likely something to it. Um, and it's one of those things where the um, there are pretty much no drawbacks to trying it. So it's certainly worth experimenting with. Um, and it's also a strategy that uh, I think is most likely to be helpful if it's implemented very early on in an attack. In an attack. Um, just both from a uh, theoretical standpoint and how it probably is helping, um, and also just based on people's reports of when it has helped. Um, there are, so this has become a, a, a pretty uh, a, um, hot topic lately, the concept of just breathing exercises and breathing in general, and and rightfully so because it's 
an area that really hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but of course is obviously pretty vital, right? We do it every second of the day. Um, so certainly it's influencing uh, our health and physiology. And so it's, it makes sense to be mindful of that influence and maybe how that we can use it to our advantage and, and identify ways in which it could be harming us. Um, the, the, I think there are a couple of different uh, ways of thinking about uh, breathing exercises. And that is whether it's something you're doing sort of for a more long-term benefit. So I don't know if anybody has read the book um, Breath. Uh, we talked about it in a prior challenge. Um, but uh, there's uh, a lot of discussion there on exercises that we would be doing uh, on a regular basis to sort of promote some long-term adaptive changes in how you breathe. Uh, and for that, that could theoretically pay dividends for the migraineur, but there's really, I don't know of any research and really not any, not much in the way of anecdotal evidence either, uh, for, for that st particular strategy. And then the other being kind of short-term breathing exercises, um, and the majority of those are kind of aimed at uh, relaxation or meditation. And again, you know, they're limited in terms of studies that we have on, on this, but we know of course that breathing has physiological uh, effects and how we breathe has different um, ways in which it, it impacts us. So there are definitely biologically plausible ways. And furthermore, this is something that is, uh, um, governed directly by the hypothalamus, which is, uh, as you may recall, the part of the brain where it appears that migraines begin. Um, so there's a lot of reason to think that uh, breathing uh, and how we breathe can play a role and that even certain breathing exercises could be beneficial. And there are, you know, different physiologic parameters that are affected by breathing, our blood pH, our blood pressure, our heart rate. And if you remember from the uh, uh, those of you who've seen the drug-free guide, the 11 strategies, I think it is. Um, most of those, the kind of the ones that that the most that people report the most success with, all have direct impact on homeostasis. So the idea being there that uh, what they may be doing is uh, impacting whatever thing that that um, you know was was provoking the beast in the first place is helping to mitigate that. Probably the most researched. Uh, thing that uh, at least kind of the short-term breathing exercises have been shown to do is reduce stress um, and specifically uh, increasing the amount of parasympathetic tone. So you have our, you have your fight or flight system and you have your rest and digest system and the um, rest and digest is your parasympathetic system. So um, the breathing exercises, in particular, ones that slow down your breathing rate, that that's, uh, tends to be the kind of the uh, common feature um, where you see uh, increases in heart rate variability, which is a marker of the level of parasympathetic activity, um, and that has a has a relaxing effect. So it may well be that could be you know one mechanism by which it's helping those um, who report sex success with this and migraine. And again, it's there, it's a lot of people think of deep breathing, but it's actually slow breathing. And probably that one or one of the most common way to do this is inhale for a certain period of time and exhale for a certain period of time. Um, so, and typically the expiration, the exhalation fa phase is longer than the inhalation phase. So you might inhale for four seconds, exhale for six seconds, and then aiming, which gives you a kind of a respiratory rate of six times per minute. So that's one strategy that I think would make sense if you're trying to uh, test this out for yourself. The other thing too, which was really emphasized in the book is the importance of breathing through the nose. Um, and I won't get into all the specifics of, of that, but um, so when you're doing these exercises uh, to try to breathe through the nose and generally speaking as an, the, the, mess, the, the book, the author of the book said, if there's anything, one thing you to take away from this um, book is to breathe through your nose. And I think we, we may do this, do the, a, a whole challenge on breathing and maybe we'll use that book uh, as a book club, but um, definitely something I think to explore further. Uh, but the key again, exp uh, the longer exhalation phase. My mom 
has used uh, breathing her herself to in the past to abort migraines and hers was basically uh, she would just exhale for as long as she could sustain. Um, so that's another strategy if you uh, wanted to try and, and um, but I think that the I think that overall, physiologically speaking, uh, it's slowing down the breath and having your exhale longer than your inhale that probably f promotes the physiological changes that we're interested in here. Next question is, would a vegetarian diet uh, that includes dairy and eggs still work for migraines? And this, let's see. Um, so short answer is, it's not something uh, I personally rec advocate or try, um, and I'll I'll get into why that is. Um, so in the clinic chat, the, the the live session that I did not too long ago on keto for migraine, I talked about kind of the key difference between the migraine miracle plan with keto um, and kind of the popular keto. That's com that you commonly see is that the latter is pretty much, you know, it's ketosis at any, however you get there. And there's almost no awareness or concern about the way, you know, you get to ketosis. Um, it's kind of like, as long as you're, as long as you're in keto, no matter what you consume to get there, uh, mission accomplished. Uh, again, as I talked about in there, that, that um, presentation that it's, you know, I think that reflects kind of the silver bullet reductionist thinking that ignores the fact that we're complex systems. So there's never, it's never about any one thing, always about the totality of everything that determines its overall impact on our health. And so the issue that arises with trying to uh, get into ketosis with a restricted uh, diet like that um, is that you'd have to, it requires relying on certain things uh, things like dairy, uh, a lot of dairy, um, or refined oils or nuts and seeds for protein or protein powders, um, re relying, uh, more on things like that to get into ketosis. And, you know, while having ketones circulating in the brain, um, appears to be protective against migraines, the, the total impact of the diet, I would think it's unlikely to be beneficial and more likely to make things worse. Um, and I've tried uh, myself kind of trying to see if I could put together, a, you know, a version that I would be able to feel comfortable with that would kind of work with those constraints. And I've, I've yet to do so yet. So um, it's not something I would, so I would, for, for someone who's in that category, I think you, you could, you would still adhere to kind of the basic principles of the plan, but I think trying to get into, uh, d trying to get sort of the uh, macronutrients to a place that would generate ketosis is probably going to cause more harm than benefit. All right. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Miracle Moment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast in your podcast player of choice. And if you know any fellow migraine sufferers, please feel free to share it with them as well. And now it's time to go out and slay the beast. Mm -hmm.